Greetings RC Model Geeks and here we are nearly outside the shed so thought I'd give you a bit of an update um, basically still in a holding pattern um, took eight months to get probate uh, for my mother um, which just dragged on and on the only reason I got it in the end was because I wrote a letter of complaint and surprise surprise within days it was all sorted it just goes to show you don't get nothing done unless you complain anyway so the house we went up for sale um, got an offer on it um, waiting for that to be finalized um, the buyer had a chain uh, the chain fell through uh, they got another buyer in their chain still going through so hopefully um, all be done and dusted end of January according to the solicitors so then we can sort of move on and uh, do what I love best which is uh, is building and flying model airplanes um, right what's been happening um, yeah well I mean <sighs> This winter, I thought about heating the shed, and uh, for the last couple of years, I was using a, uh, a diesel heater, uh, which is this thing out here. Now, this one, this one comes with a car. Uh, it's very environmentally friendly. Um, now, um, uh, I worked out if I use this to heat the uh, the shed this winter, it's going to cost me six hundred quid. And uh, with the current state of affairs, as in me being completely skint, um, yeah, I thought I just oh, can't do it. Can't do it. Six hundred quid in diesel for the winter is uh, is extortionate. So I installed, as you can see up there, a log burner, and it's just got a kettle on it at the moment. Uh, warming up ready for the first coffee of the day and uh, there's so much free wood here that you know excluding the cost of the uh, uh, the wood burner which was 200 and something quid um, running it for the winter is free so that was the really the only uh, option now anyway um, <sighs> This thing up here, the old uh, weather station that's right on the top of that pole, it's gone wrong for some reason. And uh, it went wrong, it started to go wrong in the summer actually. Some of the reading started to drop out on it, put a new battery in it, it didn't make any difference, blah blah blah. And, uh, and as you can see on here, uh, the indoor stuff works but all the outdoor stuff basically says error so I thought today um, we'd take that off the pole and uh, take it apart uh, and see what's wrong with it see if I can fix it you know, if I manage to fix it uh, you'll probably see this video <laughs> uh, yeah so um, I'm back with you in a, in a minute and I hope you're all keeping warm Well, the kettle's boiling. It's making a vain attempt to whistle. So I'm going to have a coffee and uh, get that weather station off the pole. Right. So here we are. First thing is to check out these batteries. Now, I only put these in in the summer. I don't know if we can get the uh, the meter in the view there. There we go. Come on. Point seven of a volt. Like I said, I put those batteries in in the summer. And the reason I put them in was because the weather station was playing up anyway 
and um, some of the stuff wasn't reading. They haven't lasted very long. So uh, the, the original set that I put in there lasted almost two years. So I wonder if some water has got into this thing um, here and, uh, and it's basically making it uh, draw too much current. So um, I've got some new batteries on the way anyway, but like I said, it had an issue before I put the new batteries in in the summer. So I think we'll just take it apart, look at the, uh, the circuit boards and, uh, and, and see um, if there's any like water damage or whatever. Okay, so we've got the basics of it apart. Now let's just look down here at the uh, anemometer. Um, you can see there's, there's some remains of a spider there, which is a good sign that um, something's got in here. And that there's a bit of spider poo there as well. So maybe if we remove this plastic here we might find that there's uh, some more bugs or water or whatever or um, spider poo um, on the circuit board or something but it looks like this looks like there's a lot going on in that um, that wind direction uh, indicator there's a lot of wires going up to that i wonder if the temperature i think the temperature probe wasn't working um i'm just wondering whether that's actually up in this head here uh, like i said there's a lot of wires going to it there's the antenna there um Here's the uh, the water gauge. Basically, the water runs in there, and then when there's a certain amount, it flips like that. Dunk, 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 and that's how it measures the water it goes through this uh, this funnel here that's on top. So I think we need to delve deeper and uh, uh, and see what's going on. Okay, <clears throat> stripping down has continued. Um, found some bugs in there, a couple of ladybirds, amazingly, still alive. Um, yeah, um, and this is where the uh, the temperature sensors uh, lie in there. As you can see, it's pretty murky and manky. So I've got a feeling that that is probably where the problem lies. And we'll get that apart completely um, and have a clean out. Where'd my ladybird go? No, don't know, but like I said, there was two ladybirds um, still alive in the middle of winter, hibernating. Sorry I disturbed you. Uh, yeah, so we'll get that off now. Um, there's bound to be something in there, probably laying across the legs of the temperature sensor or something. Um, or, you know, it's just corroded or something. So we'll give that a good old uh, uh, clean out. Okay, so I've unsoldered the four wires that go to this uh, temperature sensor on that board there. You can see it's really manky up in there. It's like, it must have been a spider's toilet or something. Um, yeah, unsoldered those. Now it's also got that horrible gunk that they use, like a glue. And this glue's notorious for going um, low resistance and causing problems on circuit boards and stuff uh, when it dries out but anyway um, so I've tried to free that up as much as possible and I'll um, I'll flip it over in a minute and uh, see if I can get that board out and we'll, uh, we'll have a look at it and see how skanky it is right got that sensor out now all that mankiness is actually encapsulation. They've encapsulated the board uh, into this bit of plastic. Um, 
you know, it's a little bit skanky. Um, maybe if it was damp as well, then that would cause problems. Who knows? Well, um, <clears throat> we'll clean it up as best we can. Um, see what happens. So, diagnosis complete. So, if we look right down here, you will see uh, there and there, there should be two resistors. And they'd actually corroded themselves off. Now, one of them is, where can I find, there it is. There's one of them, and the other one is uh, stuck in there. So, yes, that's not good. And as you can see, there's also a capacitor there that is well corroded. So that is why um, the, the temperature sensor, which that is, wasn't working. Now, like I said, it was in there and it was encapsulated in there. It was a right bugger to get out. But I think what happened was where the uh, the solder resist on the board is so shiny, the uh, the epoxy encapsulation didn't really seal to the board. And so water was able to wick up it and uh, and just corrode those two resistors. Yes, that's going to be fun to fix, isn't it? But we'll have a go, and uh, hopefully um, we can get this working again. Um, hmm, great fun. Don't think I can get any closer than that. So I'm going to have a go at cleaning that up. And uh, we'll see what value those resistors were. I might have a couple of spares knocking around. Um, yes, great fun. Okay, so stuff has happened. Don't know how close I can get in on that. Um, repaired. Two new resistors and a capacitor. I had to move the capacitor. Um, to a slightly different location just to get it to fit. I haven't got exactly the right size uh, surface mount components. Uh, that black blob that is there is the little temperature sensor. So um, I've got to put the cover back on which is what that little square thing is there that goes over the temperature sensor. You can see there's two little holes where it clips in. So hopefully, I mean, it's all going to work. <laughs> uh, we'll have to see. I think I might just wire it up uh, and make sure that it is working before we encapsulate it back in there. Um, yes. So, I think I'll get on with that and, uh, and then come back. Um, probably get it all done today. As you can see, it's in quite a lot of bits at the moment. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm I'm confident it's going to work. Um, we found the problem. Um, fingers crossed. All right, board temporarily soldered back on. And would you believe it? Fifteen degrees. This is inside, obviously. Uh, yeah, uh, everything is working. How amazing is that? So, we bought this one back from the dead. Uh, yeah, I can't actually, I can't believe it's working either. Um, so, all I've got to do now is put it back together, the million screws clean up these little bits um, got to repot that board hopefully we can do a better job than uh, than what the people that made it did 
Um, I think what we'll do is we'll epoxy it in first of all and then use some uh, RTV sealant around it and that hopefully will um, you know we'll, we'll, we'll stop the water um, uh, wicking through there. I might just roughen up the board because that was the real problem the fact that the board was so smooth um, that the epoxy hadn't actually sealed to it um, but yeah I'll um, have a play around with that well there you go she's all back together uh, and all working particularly boo so it's just a case now of whacking it back on the pole out in the cold <laughs> and uh, yeah I'll be able to uh, monitor uh, the weather and the wind again and also on the internet because the uh, the data uh, that comes out of this um, gets uploaded to uh, weather underground uh, and you can look at all the stats and stuff uh, on there uh, and, and see what's happening so I'll go and uh, do that. Well, the sun is setting and the uh, weather station is back on its pole. Uh, let's see what it's reading outside now. 1.8 degrees, 1.7 degrees. It's still dropping from... Uh, it's still like getting cool. Obviously, it was in the uh, the shed all day, so it warmed up. But yeah, 1.7 degrees and dropping. So <laughs> there you go. That is uh, that's it for the day. Uh, thought I'd make a quick video just to say I am still alive. The old fire's nearly out. Um, that's kept me warm all day. Yeah, she's burning away in there. That will keep the uh, shed warm for a few hours tonight. Uh, so I'm off home uh, to my completely cold house because, uh, like I said, you know, it's uh, it's up for sale. Actually, it is sold, but I'm still living in it until the uh, money's in the bank and the uh, the heating is broken and um, it was sold with broken heating and so it ain't getting repaired so as you can imagine it ain't exactly warm at the moment for me uh, either so you know the sooner that place goes uh, the better and then we can uh, move on with our lives and uh, and start building again um, obviously when I move out I've got to find somewhere to live as well so it's all gonna be uh, a right shithole and a nightmare but uh, I'm sure we'll get there in the end and when it's all sorted we'll be back making these videos proper like. So like, comment, subscribe if I don't see you before. Have a good Christmas and a happy new year. Um, hopefully I'll uh, make another video. Um, I did get this box here actually. There's a box here. It's got a storch in it. Um, off the top of my head I can't remember who sent it in. Uh, it's like a uh, pre-covered little storch, uh, a smaller version of this one that's up here. Uh, it's the Russian version. Uh, and that was my phone. Anyway, so yeah, as I was saying, uh, it's a pre-built version of uh, that one up there, slightly smaller as well. Um, if I can remember the, the name of the guy that sent it to me, I'll put it in the uh, in the description. Um, but yeah, um, it's quite a little dinky one, like I said, in Russian uh, uh, colour scheme. So, uh, see you all soon. I did put on Facebook some time ago about uh, selling some planes. Um, uh, uh, the Eindecker is for sale, that's over there at the moment. Um, if you want the Eindecker, give me a, give me a yell. Um, the triplane, I believe, is already gone. Um, but yeah, if you want the Eindecker, um, let me know, and uh, you can have that. You obviously have to come and collect it. 
Uh, but yeah, like, comment, subscribe. Talk to you all soon. Bye. Thank you for watching Captain Rob's RC Model Geeks. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to click that like button. If you want to see more of the same type of videos, don't forget you can subscribe. If you want to support us, you can use PayPal, paypal.me forward slash RC Model Geeks. If you want to contact us, you can email us rcmodelgeeks at gmail.com. We look forward to seeing you in the next video.